Hello my dear fourth year medical students of EMP. My name is Dr. Savory Said, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and Shams University. Today I am going to present the topic of perperitum and perperal pyrexia. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to define the period of perperitum, define perperal pyrexia, order the appropriate investigations for any patient presenting with perperal pyrexia, and appropriately manage a case of perperal pyrexia. You will also be able to define and list causes of secondary postpartum hemorrhage. Diagnose and manage a case of secondary postpartum hemorrhage. And identify and treat different types of psychiatric problems during perperitum. The perperitum is the six-week period following the birth of the baby during which all the physiological and anatomical changes of pregnancy are reversed after the endocrine influence of the placenta is removed. The lactation is established and the mother becomes physically and mentally adjusted to cope with the arrival of a new baby. The attending physician has an important role for the mother to have a smooth and safe transition of the parturient woman from the pregnant state to the state of a new mother capable of looking after her baby and restoring her physical and mental fitness as a wife with a clear plan for family planning after she resumes ovulation by the end of the perperitum. So the obstetrician should monitor the physiological changes of perperitum, diagnose and treat any postnatal complications, establish infant feeding, give the mother emotional support, and advise about the most suitable contraceptive method. By far the commonest three complications during perperitum are perperal pyrexia, postpartum hemorrhage whether primary or secondary and psychiatric disorders. Perperal pyrexia is diagnosed whenever there is body temperature rise above 38 degrees centigrade on any occasion in the first 10 days of perperitum excluding the first day. The topic of primary postpartum hemorrhage has been presented separately in detail but today we will discuss only the secondary PPH which is much less common than the primary type. It is any vaginal bleeding encountered in the six-week period after delivery excluding the first day of perperitum. Psychiatric disorders include the postpartum blues and the much less common but much more serious, postpartum psychosis. In a decreasing order of frequency, causes of postpartum fever include endometritis most common urinary tract infection mastitis pneumonia backslash adultesis wound infection surgical site infection and septic pelvic thrombophlebitis these are important risk factors for postpartum infection at both the genital and extragenital sites Many of these factors are modifiable and their correction before or during labor can markedly reduce the incidence of perperal pyrexia. This table emphasizes the main diagnostic criteria and the broad lines of management of each cause of perperal pyrexia. The causes are listed according to the most likely day of onset of the pyrexia. The first five causes are remembered with words starting with the letter W, wind, water, womb, wound and walk as shown in the table. The clinical examination of a feverish perperal lady should include Vital signs for pattern of fever, wide hectic spikes of fever is suspiciasis of septic thrombophlebitis. Chest for pneumonia or atelectasis, mastitis, breast abscess. Abdominal palpation for costover tebral angle tenderness, urinary tract infection, or uterine tenderness, endometritis, or caesarean section wound redness and tenderness and induration, surgical site infection. Vaginal examination for offensive discharge, cervical motion tenderness, adnexal tenderness. The workup of postpartum pyrexia should include CBC, urine analysis, culture and sensitivity tests of blood, urine, sputum, cervical swab, wound swabs according to the suspected source of infection. Chest X-ray Abdominopelvic ultrasound Prevention is better than treatment. For vaginal delivery, reduce the risk of infection by shortening the duration of labor, minimizing frequency of vaginal examination, use sterile gloves and inhibit an antiseptic cream on the gloves, hand washing slash alcohol gel after examination, 
minimize episiotomy and instrumental delivery, induce labor within 48 hours of term premature rupture of membranes, proper repair of vaginal tears with no hematomas. For cesarean section give prophylactic antibiotics 30 minutes before skin incision, ampicillin or first generation cephalosporin, plus postoperative zithromycin for prolonged prom or suspected urea plasma urealyticum. Avoid closure of visceral or parietal peritoneum. Close the subcutaneous fat if more than 2 cm thick. Ensure proper hemostasis and avoid hematomas by drains. Control diabetes perioperatively. Apply antiseptic vaginal betadine before caesarean section. Treatment includes IV broad-spectrum antibiotics for 48 hours after fever is resolved for infective causes like endometritis, urinary tract infection, mastitis, pneumonia, in addition to antipyretic drugs like paracetamol for the fever. Surgery may be necessary to Remove any retained products of conception Drain infected episiotomy Drain breast abscess if the fever persists for more than three days of IV antibiotics, pelvic thrombophlebitis should be suspected and excluded by CT or MRI of the pelvis. Heparin therapy is then initiated for thrombophlebitis followed by oral anticoagulation for six weeks until the pelvic veins are cleared of the thrombus. Let us move now to the topic of secondary postpartum hemorrhage. It is vaginal bleeding during the first six weeks after birth excluding the first postpartum day. The commonest cause is retained products of conception in the form pieces of fetal membranes or placental fragments or retained blood clots. It can be easily diagnosed by pelvic ultrasound that will reveal the intrauterine tissues and clots filling the uterine cavity. Very rarely choriocarcinoma can present with late persistent vaginal bleeding and it can be diagnosed by the combination of an empty uterus by ultrasound and very high serum level of HCG, human chorionic gonadotrophin. So the usual workup of secondary postpartum hemorrhage includes CBC, coagulation profile, pelvic ultrasound, and occasionally serum HCG level if choriocarcinoma is suspected by ultrasound. Most cases of secondary postpartum hemorrhage are mild and don't require blood transfusion. The products of conception are usually expelled by oxytocic drugs like ergometrine and misoprostol for a few days. More severe cases with enlarged uterus containing big placental pieces like retained adherent cotyledon or accessory placental lobe will need surgical evacuation of the uterus under general anesthesia. A course of antibiotics might be needed in late presenting cases where the products of conception were neglected for days or weeks before evacuation was performed. The third important complication that may occur during puparitum is related to the mental health of the mother. Postpartum depression or blues is not uncommon especially in those who have marital problems or lacking support from their family members. It usually present in the fourth postpartum day with tearfulness and anxiety. It usually responds to simple reassurance by the attending midwife or family members. Rarely, the mother may suffer from serious postpartum psychosis especially if there is past history of psychotic disorder before pregnancy. The etiology is not well understood but might be related to the endocrine changes of perparatum. It should be taken seriously before the mother may commit suicide or make any violent acts against her own child. Psychiatrist consultation should be requested whenever the mother presents with any of warning symptoms like confusion, hallucinations, delirium, or restlessness. A 28-year-old primogravid underwent a caesarean section for breech presentation and prom at 36 weeks gestation. The caesarean section was uncomplicated, but on postpartum day 2, the patient had fever, 38.5 C, and uterine tenderness. A diagnosis of postpartum endometritis was made and the infection was treated with mefoxine 1 G48 hourly. After 24 hours of antibiotics, the patient presented with pain in the right lower abdomen and loin, and her WBC count was 12,000-mm3. She continued to have spikes of fever. Abdominal examination, soft, flat, 
with tenderness on the right lower abdomen, no rebound tenderness. McBurney's point negative. Murphy's sign, negative. Renal angle, negative. Your analysis was unremarkable. On postpartum day 4, the patient's condition showed no improvement after antibiotic treatment. Abdominal CT scan revealed right ovarian vein. The diagnosis was changed to ovarian vein thrombophlebitis. The patient started therapeutic inoxaparin, clexane, ADIU-12 hours SC. After 48 hours of anticoagulation, the patient was afebrile and asymptomatic. The patient was discharged home on warfarin tablets 10 mg day at INR of 2.5. Repeat CT scan 6 weeks later, right ovarian thrombosis cleared and warfarin was discontinued. That is the end of the lecture on postpartum complications. I hope that you enjoyed it and are able to achieve its intended learning objectives. I look forward to complete the discussion on the topic with more clinical cases in the face-to-face -face session. Thank you.